a look now at what we've been one of the biggest uh, talking points over the last uh, while. It's as we get ready for the build-up uh, to the ANC elective conference later this year. We've had a number of interviews uh, with the ANC so far, talking about names being bandied about. Uh, but so far, it doesn't look like anybody is willing to tie their flag to the mast. However, it seems uh, that one of those regions is in fact happening. It's uh, all got to do uh, with the Etiquini region as well. And uh, the uh, political analyst, Lukanya Bankla, uh, joining us this morning here on the South African Morning. Hi, Lukanya. Good to have you back with us uh, on ENC. Excuse the voice. I seem to be fighting a bit of a cold this morning. Please forgive me. So now we are hearing two big names, and neither of those are the current president or the deputy president. What did you make of all this? Uh, good morning, Gary. Thank you for having me. Yes, very uh, monumental um, endorsement for Zuelim Kiza's bid for the ANC presidency coming from the Etekwini region. Um, even more monumental and even bigger is that it also endorses the deputy candidate, deputy president candidate of Paul Mashatile. If you'll remember, Paul Mashatile has not always been a friend of um, KZN and Etekwini having been the person that spearheaded the removal of Jacob Zuma in 2018. So you would uh, think that there's no love lost between him and that province. However, very interesting that there are no permanent enemies in politics, just permanent interests. And now it seems that the interests of Paul Mashatile and those of the Etekwini region uh, seem to converge uh, at this particular moment, heading up to the ANC National Conference. And that region has endorsed uh, Paul Mashatile, which is a very big endorsement. Uh, it is a very big endorsement, uh, certainly is as well. Arguably one of the biggest uh, regions as far as ANC politics goes. But why Paul Mashatile? What has he done that has caught the attention of the Etiquini region? It is the biggest region, uh, Gareth, um, of the ANC in South Africa. It's so big that it takes a large, a larger delegation to national conference than um, other provinces of the ANC. I mm -hmm. think it takes a bigger delegation than both the Northern Cape and the Western Cape um, to national conference. So it's quite a big uh, region and a big endorsement. It's a very important region. Uh, in the life of the ANC. Why Paul Mashatile? I think there is um, new allegiances that have formed in um, the politics of the ANC, especially this year, which was the year of so many conferences of the ANC, regional conferences, provincial conferences, leading up to the national conference. And it seems that Paul Mashatile used his position as the acting secretary general of the ANC to assist some of the factions that eventually won uh, those conferences. And now it's time uh, for them to pay back that, mm. for that support that he lent to them. Uh, support aside as well, we need to talk about Zueli and Kize as well, all the drama around uh, his former ministry. Uh, what does it say about the ANC when uh, there were so many allegations leveled against Zueli and Kize that they still believe he could be the man to run not just their biggest region, uh, but also the entire ANC and possibly the country? Yes, it, it, it speaks to a morality and ethics of politics that is factionalized within the ANC. People only look at things as immoral or unethical um, as long as it doesn't affect their faction. So the, the problem that you have with that is that um, individuals will be able to uh, fall through the cracks and rise to very important positions of the ANC because of the factions that they belong to. So what the what KZN has done, uh, Tequini actually, has done in the endorsement of uh, Zuelin Kiza, who faces all of these allegations, is the same thing that the CR faction has done in endorsing um, the candidature of um, the, the, the current finance minister that is facing very serious allegations of sexual harassment um, that were, you know, leveled against him. So people seem to be um, supporting their own roles as long as they belong to their own factions. Uh, let's just change tack very quickly. We've got to talk about Nelson Mandela uh, Bay Metro as well, coming in from early hours this morning, the news that there is a new mayor in charge. But I'm curious to get your thoughts, uh, Lokanyo, before I let you go on the ousting uh, as well of uh, the now former mayor, Eugene Johnson. Accusations flying around, getting very hairy in the council sitting yesterday as well. What do you make of the ousting of uh, Eugene uh, Johnson? 
It's the normal ebbs and flows of coalition politics, um, Gareth, that it is a war of attrition, that you will win some and you will lose some, and your seat is never guaranteed. So what the ANC did um, with Mayor um, Eugene in the previous seating where they were delaying the inevitable by um, with that abortive um, court case, it, it was simply delaying the inevitable because they had lost, simply obviously lost the majority um, of council support and therefore they were going to be voted out at any point. So the, a, the, the ANC has lost um, the metro of Nelson Mandela Bay, the DA is losing the metro of uh, Johannesburg. It's the natural ebbs and flows of coalition politics. Uh, but uh, in conclusion as well, I suppose, Lukanyo, the issue is that we are hearing there is an expectation, tell me if you agree or not, that we're going to have uh, an outcome with a coalition national government come 2024. And what we're seeing so far, uh, the coalition governments at municipal level are very, very messy. And even at regional level, it doesn't bode well for national coalition governments if this is how it gets handled at the lower rungs of politics. Yes, Gareth, the country is still very new um, to this idea of coalition politics, especially at this grand scale. Yes, it, um, we, we, we had it in 2006 in, in, in the city of Cape Town, but still it's, it's a relatively new concept. And some of these political actors are still not accustomed to the politics of coalitions, and therefore there's going to be an inbuilt um, level of instability with regards to coalition politics. The country must be prepared for at least the next 10 to 15 years to be able to live within an unstable coalition um, uh, environment. And that is going to be um, very unfortunate, but it's the, it's the natural um, progression of, of this politics and it's the natural progression of our democracy as a country. This is where we're headed and we must be able to, um, to live with the reality of instability. I wonder if the politicians can live with it. Lucanio, thank you very much. Always good to have you with us. Uh, political analyst uh, Lucanio Vanka joining us this morning uh, here to try and unpack, A, what is happening with the Etiquini region. You would have heard uh, the Etiquini ANC throwing their weight behind two big names, uh, Zoelium Kize and Paul Mashatile.